Alright, what's up guys, Joey Kong 94 today. I got my cousin Vin here with me. Um, so this is going to be our first podcast. This is an idea we came up with, fuck, four years ago, I think now. Uh, something along the lines of that. Three, it's four, been, maybe been five years ago, me, him, and his brother, Dante, who was working. So sorry, Dante, but... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the three of us came up with the idea um, called The Shed, yeah. where we would have a certain activity that was done in the shed at the time um be the theme of it and then we would just talk about whatever but it was going to be in the shed but that's, that's where we would like hang out we would hang out in the shed the right shit. but at the same time we're grown ass men i don't want to sit in the fucking shed and freeze my dick off and talk to you guys i'd rather sit in a comfortable couch with a massage right. chair okay <laughs> and talk to you guys but basically i mean i'm sure i put something to indicate this in the title but we're gonna be talking about aliens and UFOs, something that we've both been interested in, including his brother. Like I said, he'll be in the next one or one at some point. Something we've been interested in a long ass time. We've always talked about, and recently, I watched the Bob Lazar's uh, Flying Saucer and whatever the fuck it is, Area Fifty One Flying Saucer and UFO documentary by Jeremy Corbell. Excellent documentary. I very strongly suggest watching it. It's on Tubi. It's an app or a website. I believe you can go and watch it for free. You just have to watch ads, which is a big deal. Um, and that really sparked my interest a lot in it. Recently, I also watched the full Joe Rogan podcast with Bob Lazar. Great podcast. Um, it's like almost two hours, 15 minutes. Two hours and 15 minutes long or something like that, but it's worth it. I watched the entire thing. There's a, There's another one, too pretty recently the same i forget the guy's name the dude who's got like the tattoos and the beard jeremy, and everything. jeremy that, corbell okay yeah it's been a while so i don't i don't remember the names but he just recently went on there again not with bob this time yeah and we're just like going over more stuff so i saw parts of it i saw one where he said he defends bob bazaar right because bob's gotten a lot of backlash since right all of that mm-hmm. um right. which is probably and expected. basically for those of you guys that don't know and i wrote some notes i might have to reference them but Basically, at some point, Bob Lazar was a physicist at a place called Los Alamos. I don't know exactly the business, but something where he was a physicist, right? And he ended up having a lecture at this place by the guy that invented the hydrogen bomb, the atom bomb. And he ended up meeting the guy and, you know, talking to him or whatever. And years later, he moved out to Nevada and met up with this guy and basically got hired were sent to an interview at this place called EG&G. What ended up happening there is they basically told him, look, you're going to be working for the government in a secret department doing back engineering or, um, you know, reverse engineering. And long story short, he ended up working at Area 51. And basically what he was doing there was trying to figure out how this gravity propulsion device worked that apparently powered these flying saucers which he talks about in this documentary in, in much more detail you guys can go watch i don't want to talk too much about things in the documentary in the podcast so i do really want you guys to watch them because they're excellent but basically <clears throat> you know he talks about this thing and that there's no way it was ever made by humans because we just it's not possible for us to create gravity out of nothing it's not something that we could do with things on earth correct me if i'm wrong so let me just say this for myself joe joe's been up to date on the stuff more he's watched it more recently um i've seen the joe rogan podcast i haven't seen the full documentary of bob lazar um so there's going to be things that i'm kind of going by based on memory and stuff so if i get shit wrong that's right. why i'm not just making shit up and going by the best of my memory but correct me if i'm wrong did bob lazar know that he was going to be working at area 51 or was that like that kind of like so the interview for this job and he doesn't really know what he's getting into until he's there and then he's getting it was that they okay. basically told him what he would kind of be doing that he would be back engineering um gravity like propulsion crash, right? well back gravity propulsion device okay right that he would be trying Which to fit a broad term right and he was gonna be working on this and then they basically told him you're gonna go here and do this basically and they brought him in and made him sign a ton of paperwork he accepted the job and it wasn't until a little while in, when he first saw this first craft, you know, he walked by and, it, and he walked right past it. And you know, I guess he said he like kind of slid his hand along it. 
and got yelled at for it. And the guy in the military that was escorting him, like an armed guard, basically told him, walk for it and don't look at anything and don't ask questions until you get to where you go. And him and his partner, um, I'm going to have to look at his partner's name. I'm having a complete blank on this. One so thing I, while you're looking that up, um, yeah. I think if I remember correctly that the more recent podcast with that guy that was talking to Joe, I think he made mention that like, like there were a lot more qualified people that are way more advanced in the field than Bob. So that's what was kind of strange. And I guess it would make sense. Like if you're going to bring somebody in that's, you know, going to be working in like the most top secret government facility, probably in the world, or at least that we know of, like you would, you want somebody that's like intelligent enough, but also doesn't have like that typical same reputation and like you want somebody that's kind of just nobody's really going to know because it makes it easier to like probably control him because he's got less of authority and all that uh definitely less believable because he's not going to be known by as much like it just it all kind of makes sense but i feel like that's a really interesting point that needs to be like emphasized what bob basically said and 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 I only watched this documentary once in bits and pieces of the podcast today when I was kind of doing a recap and a research to refresh my mind and to, to you know, take some notes on a couple of different names and things that I was trying to remember to make sure I talked about. And Bob basically said that he didn't, they didn't hire him out of high school. They kind of, he alluded that the government did hire him or send him to MIT and I forgot, Stanford maybe was the other school, but whatever other school he went to, they basically... He alluded to the fact that they sent him there. Wait, and really? Yeah. Explain that a little bit more. I, that's as much as I really know about it. Basically, he kind of said in that the Bolena said there was the podcast, and he was saying how, you know... So they he was in contact and, like, being reached out to before. I thought he had already been working in the field after college, and that's when they, like, got no, hold of him. No, Los, Los Alamos, he went to college for, you know, being a physicist or right, general, right. whatever he was. But I didn't know it went that far he, back. I... I I could be wrong on this fact, but I be- want to say I remember Bob Lazar saying something along the lines of, they didn't hire me right out of high school. Right. Which that could mean that he went to high school, he may have went to college himself. Well, I might have got that part wrong. Gotcha. Well, that's what I'm kind That'd of That'd be some, could... if I remember, I'll try to edit on the screen and say the quote or something to say what I'm talking about. But, but, but anyways, moving on, he, he, you know, talks about how his partner Barry is the name, by the way. Um, you know, alluded also to the fact that this wasn't something from Earth or whatever, and he was saying that in top secret clearance and top secret projects, um, that when they have these people reverse engineering things or or anything top secret, they have it very sectioned off. So if me and Vin are lab right. partners working on how this thing is powered. The other two guys are working on what controls and how it drives, but we don't know each other. I have no idea what they found, and they have no idea what we found. And Bob was saying that, you know, he never understood why they did that because it'd be better for, you know, eight or nine guys to look at one thing and say, oh, you know what, maybe this is this. And, he, you know, it would just give them more opportunity for development, but because of the secrecy and the over-secrecy, in his opinion, they didn't do that. But that makes sense, though, because, I mean, if you think about it, if you if you wanted to minimize your risk of leaked information, oh, yeah, then I only know about no, this little section. Right, and there's no change. Like people you work with on the same project don't right. know you, so you can't name drop. Right. You can't get a group of people. Oh, I, I I totally super, understand why they do it, but you know what I mean. But he right. was just saying, as far as science development, it would it would be yeah, it'd be easier. But I oh, yeah, yeah, I get it. So, anyways, he talks about how he you know worked on these things and that. Um, at one point, Dennis, who was their boss, they're kind of like the guy that kind of walked him around, and they basically reported to Dennis, "Hey, this is what we found. This does this. This is." And Dennis would go talk to whoever higher up than him in the government, but Bob never, never knew this person that Dennis reported to. And at one point, Dennis showed them a demonstration of the craft that he worked on. He saw it, you know, kind of hover with a very slight whistle, and then move around kind of um, silently. And it made some, you know, somewhat normal movements, but still, I believe he said nothing that we could have did with, you know, technology we had then or even now. Right, because any aircraft we have now can only really propel 
upward and forward. Right. Can't really go, you can't just go side like to this. side, back, that we know back of. and forth. And here's the thing well, at this right, point that's now, true. that's a whole other topic that we can do if you guys want us to. Military secrets and conspiracies, which is kind of related to this, but it's just, I, I feel like it'd be more something that we could talk more in depth about that, that whole thing. But, anyways, so Bob sees this thing fly, he, he continues to work there, and then all of a sudden, um, he also mentions that, it, you know, basically his schedule would be three or four days on, then have two weeks off, then he'd go work there for a week, and then have, you know, another three weeks off. And it was very, and it was at random times, sometimes they would call him, you know. 11.30 midnight and say, listen, in half an hour, 45 minutes, we need you here to go to work, and he would get picked up. And because of this, his wife thought he was cheating on her and started having an affair, right? And because of this, they stopped calling Bob in because when you have top-secret clearance, he was saying, or I believe he said he had something called majestic clearance, which I don't know if I'm right, so don't quote me on that part because I didn't get that far in the podcast to check, but... Basically, when you have top secret clearance, he was saying that you have to have a good home life. So if you have marital problems or child problems or, or, or things like that, you're cut off because it might affect your mental state and you might do something bad or fuck up or whatever. So and they don't know what you told your family and you got a risk. Them doing right. So like so that. basically that they stopped calling Bob and Bob got freaked out and said, OK, well, I know the test flights are on Wednesday nights because at they did a statistic that on Wednesday nights, that's when the traffic on the highway was the, the slowest at certain times. So they would test at night during these times, and Bob basically brought them to the test site test site on Papoose Lake, which is where S4, which is... So let me uh, clarify, Bob Bazaar did work for Area 51, but it wasn't actually at Area 51. It was called S4, which I assume would stand for Site 4. And there was different sub of Area 51 that he said he worked on so i gotta clear that up it was s4 and not technically area 51 but they're still in they are the they're still in the area 51 right. compound they're still in the nevada desert and he was saying how the building was kind of shaped like in a, in a t like this kind of and that it was shaped a certain way and painted a certain way with texture paint to look like sand so from the air it would just like look like part of the mountain and it wouldn't be as easy to detect or and it be able to detect it at all um, but anyways, so he basically, he takes his friends out and shows them these test flights a couple of times. And, um, you can look up Bob Lazar UFO videos. I don't know that I can edit the clip and I know I can do it, but for copyright reasons, I don't know that I can, um, don't really want to risk it. We'll see. But if it's there, it's there. If not, literally just type in, or maybe I'll put it in the description, Bob Lazar UFO footage, 1980s or something like that. And it will come up It's shit quality video, but it's what they reported. So, he gets arrested for this, right? And because he gets arrested, his boss, Dennis, or whatever, basically told him, like, you're doing a lot of shit. Well, at this point, he started fearing for his life. So, he ended up reaching out to a reporter, which I didn't get to get his name, but I'll try to edit it on the screen if I remember it. But he reaches out to this investigative reporter and says, listen, I got to tell you about this crazy government conspiracy, this big cover-up, this secret thing, and blah, blah, blah. But I want to be anonymous. And he went under the name of Dennis, which is actually his boss's name. He did that as kind of a joke. And requested that his silhouette be blacked out so they couldn't identify him and tells him all this stuff. Well, then people started asking. And the reason he did that is he figures, okay, if people know who I And eventually he comes out and, and it reveals his identity. And he did this because he wanted to be able to say... I think I might have just mixed something up. Now that I think of if I remember correctly, again, I've only watched the documentary once... I believe he went on the show first in the silhouette because they stopped calling him in and he was pissed off maybe. But either way, at some point he reveals himself and he revealed himself because he started fearing for his life and he thought that the government was going to off him because he told all the secrets. And in fact, Dennis called him and said, do you have any idea what we're going to do to you now and hung up? Um, it's according to what Bob says. And basically from there, he spilled all this stuff. Now where it gets interesting and, you know, conspiracy theorists, or not conspiracy theorists, I'm sorry, skeptics. I did watch one interview, one of the clips from Joe Rand's podcast, where a, I believe it was a former CIA agent, say he doesn't believe Bob Lazar, and that someone told him that Bob Lazar was only a guard there that scanned radiation and badges at Area 51, and 
the reason he found out all this information is because he hung out with uh, people at this bar that a lot of people that work there frequent and he eavesdropped or got them to talk or whatever. I don't believe that. Bob's story has been consistent for 30 years from what I understand. Right, it's never funny. changed. He's gained no money from this. In fact, it's probably done more damage to his life than did good. Wow. He doesn't want the fame. He doesn't like to even talk about it. It was very hard for him to be on Joe Rogan's, Joe Rogan's podcast from what they said, and it took a lot for him to go on there. You know, any money he's ever gotten from speaking, he donates to, you know, scientific research and stuff. So anyways, he goes on there, and like I said, he tells this whole story about how he worked at Los Alamos, then got hired at eg and and went to this school, and basically they got there, and... See, this is one part that is confusing, and it might be just because I don't remember exactly what they said, but they said that they took a camera into, I want to say, Los Alamos, and they walked all around, and Bob knew where things were, he knew how to get into the lab, he knew codes, people recognized him there, all kinds of stuff. So, obviously, if how would he have known that if he just got this information from the bar? Um, you know, but where it gets really interesting is that EG and G, or maybe it was Los Alamos, denied that he ever worked there, along with the school. Things like his entire birth certificate, the hospital that he was born in, just gone. Like, it never happened, that he never was born there, right? They, again, Los Alamos denied any, um, any Bob Lazar. Well, his actual name was Robert Lazar, but Bob Lazar working there. And so everyone's like, you know, what the hell? And I don't remember exactly if it was, like, very recent, like, within that same week or within a year or whatever. But somewhere along the lines, someone came out and said, no, 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 Bob Lazar definitely worked there. Here's a picture of a phone directory that had, you know, by last name, first name, everyone's name, and right there was Robert Lazar, along with all the other L's in the alphabet that were, you know, similar spelling. Along with that, there was a clip from a newspaper that if I remember, I'll try to edit in because I believe I can show that without a problem. Um, a clip from the newspaper, if not, just look this stuff up. And really, I think I actually, you know what, I'm not going to edit in one because I'm lazy and two. Because I really do, that's the reason, number one, I'm going to be honest with you is, but two, I really do want you guys to watch this documentary and this podcast. It, it'll make what we're saying make a lot more sense. And it, it'll definitely make things easier to understand, which is the same thing as make sense. I'm a little stoned. So anyways, um, Bob Lazar, they deny he works there. They deny that. They have the phone directory. And then they come out with a front page of a newspaper clipping that says, you know, Bob Lazar, a physicist here at Los Alamos, puts jet engine in a car because he took a jet engine and put it in his Honda. So they call back and say, hey, you know, we have this and this. And the guy's like, yeah, we never had a Bob Lazar work here. Well, then how would that be in the paper? And, you know, that to me screams government cover-up, conspiracy, 100%. What other explanation would it be? How, and, you know, how would Bob know that to look at that specific spot at that specific time, in that specific direction, more than once for three weeks in a row to be able to see these flights if, if he just, you know, sure, guys, maybe if he misheard it in the bar. But then why would his birth certificate all of a sudden not be there? Why would they deny him working or being at a place when there's evidence to show that he definitely was? You know, you got to think, this is also the 1980s. It's not like they had, you know, Photoshop or an easy way to fake things like that with computers. They well, At least that we know of. Yeah, like, <laughs> right, that we know of. Um, well, I meant, like, Bob Lazar, how would he have faked the, um, the newspaper article and stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, but, okay. The it military might have had it, but either way, it doesn't matter. Right. You know, so, basically, Bob Lazar came forward from Area 51, and another thing people will say is, well, why didn't more people come forward? Well, if you looked at what happened to Bob, why the hell would you? I sure as hell wouldn't. I think all your credentials to, um, get... Like, oh, absolutely, stripped. Well, I don't even know about strip, but, like, you just lose, like, the respect in the field. Like, if you do something yeah. like that, it's yeah. so easy to tarnish. I mean, think about, you know, an example, like, cancel culture shit. Like, how easy it is to, you piss one person off I and they can take that. away all credentials. So, imagine, you know, government officials with the secrecy and everything, like, how easy it is to just ruin your reputation, you know, all that. Right. So, it well, makes it makes it hard for people to believe right. that. Right. Well, I mean, I, I was more going on. I mean, that absolutely, too. But 
I was thinking more of them literally trying to delete his existence, in a well, sense. That's what I'm saying. And, like, and, and that's like that. why he went rogue and started talking about it, because like I said, and I don't blame him for it. If he's all over the news and all these people are talking about him, and all of a sudden he's talking about, you know, all this government secrecy and all this shit, um, you know, people aren't going to fucking just be like, oh, you know, he just died mysteriously. People, well, right. you never know with some of the deaths that have mysteriously happened with, you know, certain people in more recent times. Well, that's a whole other podcast we can talk about because that, that's one we can go on for a long time about, too. No, but that's a good point that you bring up, though, Mike. Oh. I think I think the whole idea when they do stuff to these people is, well, if we scare them, they'll stop, and then we can make it. Then we can kill them, but when you keep your name in the spotlight like right. Bob has, right. and I don't think he's doing it to try and be in the spotlight, but I think he's doing it like no. you're I think, hinting at. Well, here's the thing. He, it, it keeps him relevant, so that way if he does go missing after saying this, so many people are going to lose their mind and be like, holy shit. Yeah. You know, exactly. so it's like it's actually one of the smartest things you could do in this situation. Right. So, basically, you know, I, and I think at one point that the the people at the base did tell him that the reason they stopped calling because of the wife thing they played. I think they said they played him the tapes, but I'm not sure on that. But anyway, so basically, Babazar came forward all this shit, and for 30 years his stories has been consistent. It's been crucified or criticized and cruci um, criticized or whatever. Scrutinize is the other one I was thinking of. Crucified. Yeah, that's what I am right now. <laughs> Anyways, um, so... The thing that's interesting, too, is that when Bob described how these things flew back in the 80s, there was official documents, I believe, released in 2019, and they talk about this on the Joe Rogan podcast, but the Pentagon or the government basically released three different videos shot by different Air Force people showing different UFOs. And you can look these up. One is called the Gimbal UFO. If you type that on YouTube, it'll come up. The other one's called the TikTok UFO. And I'm not going to talk too much in detail about this. Cause, you know, it's hard to explain without showing the video. But the way that Bob described how this flew is if picture this as your car. And, you know, this is the top of your car, your windshield's here, your tires are down here, the bottom of the phone's the tires that it would take off like this, but that when it wanted to fly, it would lift its tires up like this or like this, and it would fly towards the direction that it went with its tires frontwards, basically. It's like the, uh, the Tic Tac thing, right? I don't know if... I, I know this isn't necessarily Bob's thing. I don't know if you've heard the other other um, Air Force people that have come forth and said they've seen it. It looks like, like a Tic Tac, like a, a Tic Tac, and how it moves through the sky is if a Tic Tac was... You know, like you're saying, standing upright, and right. it moves like that, and that's kind of the shape that I've heard. Well, well talk that's about that's things. that's the other one I was about to talk about. So, but anyways, back to the gimbal. The gimbal flies like this, and, and Bob, you know, described that years ago. So, how would he have known that if it what he says it says wasn't true? I mean, at this point, I'm 100 percent convinced that every word that Bob Lazar said is true. I don't believe he lied. He took four different polygraph tests that. I think out of like seven or eight people that did, they tested them four different times, multiple different polygraphers, and they sent the results out to multiple different polygraphers. And I think one out of like all of them said that he was being truthful. And they pretty much all agreed that what even he was there, saying was accurate. Even only one of them said he was lying. Yes, actually. yeah, yeah. One said he was lying, and only one of them said he. One of them, you know what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah. Um, he told the truth, and one said he was lying. All the rest said he was telling the truth. Um. So at this point, you know, what he says, I believe, and that furthers the evidence when he described how this thing flew years ago, and then there was video from, it was around either 2004 or maybe 2016 or something like that when this video was shot, um, and it flew just like he said. Now, they only released a 35-second clip. I'm sure it's, you know, much longer than that, and they edited things out for reasons. But the fact that the government has admitted in multiple occasions now that yes there is ufos they haven't said yet not not that they think they ever will or who knows if they will when or anything but they haven't said you know we don't know where these come from they're not from earth but they have admitted that they don't know what they are which if bob lazar is telling the truth i think they know exactly what they are but they're not going to come forward and say oh yeah it's this they don't. They don't know how they operate. That's they. It's still a mystery to them. But right. I mean. Yes. I mean UFO. It's unidentified flying objects. So right. literally any 
any plane yeah. that comes in that's unmarked or anything could technically be classified as UFO. Right, right. So it's a very vague for a reason for them to say that. Right. right. So back to what Vin was saying about the Tic Tac UFO, they were saying that basically this guy, they saw this thing coming on their radar and it went from like 600,000 feet to 50,000 feet or something like that in less than a second. It, it dropped. It, it Descended. Un, unexplainable amount so quickly. It, it, where it's not possible for anything that we have, right. that, at least that we know of, which again, you got to keep in mind that some of this stuff, I do believe in this, I do believe to be alien technology that maybe we were flying or that we found out how to use or maybe it was actual extraterrestrials in this craft, but... I would definitely say it's a combination of both. I think there's both. I think we've I think we've come across enough to know, and then you know I don't think every one we I see think, fly. I think, I think there is probably at least one that probably had either well definitely been flown in from you know an extraterrestrial being. Right. Whether they actually have there's a lot of theory about whether they actually have bodies that they've recovered. Yeah, that, that's some. I have in the notes to touch on. I think the main thing, though, is that we've at least recovered the crafts, crafts enough Absolutely. to keep them and to try and use, their use them and then recreate them. So that's that's right. what I would say. I mean, I, I think the, the I believe it's the S South Bomber, the B-2 Bomber, or the Nighthawk, it looks like a goddamn alien craft. Well, you also have to think, too. I mean, you go back to World War II, which is in the 1940s. Right. That's what, you know, Nazi Germany was working on. They were right. trying to create an anti-gravity machine, obviously. Right, for, right. I mean, because science back then was at an all. Like, you think, you know, Einstein created the nuclear bomb. All the things that are being... Anabolic steroids were created then. So if things like this were being at least introduced and worked right. on back then, I mean, who knows by, like, even the 80s when this was, or now, you know, who knows what there is. And, right, right. I think that's and, important and to remember. He, it's good that he brought up that that was during the 40s because... I'm going to talk about briefly, I believe, Roswell at some point tonight. And um, I noticed, I remember when I put my notes that a lot of UFO sightings happened after World War II or during World War II times. Um, the Battle of Los Angeles happened during World War II, um, which is another event we can talk about. Which makes sense because one of the things that a lot of people say is um, after nuclear testing and at nuclear testing sites is where the most activity seems right. to be. In and it's suspected that it's because they're observing the technology correct. because yep. there's I, I don't want to stretch this yet because i don't know if we're going to get into it but if we do get to it i'll bring up the whole nuclear thing and where that comes from but there's the idea is that nuclear energy and nuclear events testing all that is what is the main attraction for Absolutely. any alien to come and observe right and i i agree with you and i think that and we can talk more in depth on that later, but I do think that there's, and it's kind of funny because it's not a South Park episode, but I think at a certain point when we develop and discover certain technologies, we're going to see even more increase in, in alien activity because, right. like Vince said, he, and he's right, I think the same thing, that there, when we've discovered nuclear energy and how to and split atoms and create nuclear bombs and hydrogen bombs and all this stuff, is when we took... Let's just say it's a step up a ladder, right, in technology that the aliens are observing and we have to go up, what, six steps or whatever the fuck, right? And we hit that first step and that's when they're like, okay, these these guys are advancing. They're, they're, they're on the brink of, in the next, you know, few thousand years or something, discovering what we need to them, like, you know. Basically, we discover quantum physics or some shit that they'll come down and basically say, okay, yeah, listen, we're here, whatever, you know. It's kind of a joking way to say it, but you understand what I'm saying. But, you know, so back with Bob, um, during this documentary, I don't want to give away again too much, which is very interesting. And another thing that makes it more compelling that Bob is telling the truth, there's a point where they go out to the woods and they have a discussion that's private. They have their phones with them, but they're turned off, I believe. And they're, they, at some point during this talk, they're talking about basically... Bob alluded to the fact, and he might have possibly admitted it in this section in the documentary, but they cut the audio um, so you don't hear what he says. But it's suspected, at least, that Bob stuck out some of this thing called Element 115 or Element 115. 
which is believed is what they use to power this gravity propulsion device, right? And this isn't supposed to exist. I think I don't. I don't well, think it's. I'm pretty sure it's confirmed now. It is now, and that's but at the, this point, it wasn't. Is what right. I'm saying. The thing is, is Bob talked about it at first. Like he said, he brought it up, saying that was the element. People were skeptical, as always, with the story. But now, the more recent podcast where that other guy went on, Jeremy, he was able to say and confirm. Like now, it is recognized. But I yes. think I think they can only get it to actually. I don't know what the term would be, like emit energy or it's not turn on. It, it only does it. They can only get it for like a second. Right. But they don't know how to sustain it yet. Correct. There's so, it's something along those lines. He's right. I know it's it's a little off from that. I think, but I don't remember uh, oh, what the, the correct idea, thing. Though, but yes, they, they haven't figured out how to to sustain to it. use it to harness it correctly. And Bob kind of talks about it in the podcast too that he that he took it right. He doesn't want it. He. They start bringing it up and he says, I don't want to talk about that, which to me says, yeah, you know, yeah, I took it. That's, that's a big thing. It's kind of like a, a, him saying it without saying it. What's interesting to me is that they have this conversation in the middle of the woods. It's just Bob and Jeremy. They have one camera and he talks about, you know, oh, we're going to put this on a hard drive until we decide what to do with it. And if we don't want to use it, we're not going to use it. and We'll scrap it. We'll delete it and scrub it. Well, they have this conversation. And the next day, Bob Lazar gets raided by the FBI. And again, if that doesn't scream to you, there's because he makes he even makes a joke during this and says, "I don't think the government cares what I have to say after 30 years anymore." The next day, he gets raided by the FBI. Not only was the FBI, it was the NSA, I believe, the CIA, the state police, the local police, you know, whatever. This whole shebang, 12 different agencies. They had computer experts come and clone the hard drives of the computers and go through the computers and, and you know. People go through all the bills. They had people square off every square foot of the entire property and go through it each section square foot by square foot. So they searched each and every nook and cranny of that place. And their reasoning was, which is a funny theme that we'll get into in a little bit, is I always think the government's reasoning they give are the stupidest fucking things. Like, you really couldn't have came up with something better. The reason they gave Bob Lazar for raiding the FBI, raiding his business is that they were looking for a receipt from a couple of years ago that a woman might have potentially bought toxic material. I don't think anyone believes that. If you ask me, they were there looking to see if Bob had element 115 hidden there. And he said basically that he he stole it so he can try to do some own experiments on his own with it. So that just, again, screams Bob is telling the truth. They're trying to... It's, it's intimidation. Factor. Intimidation, exactly. They're trying to shake him down. So, again, I don't want to talk too much about Bob Lazar, just because... It's just an introduction, really. It's just an introduction. A long introduction. Of it, a long introduction. There's a lot to um, You know, some things you can look up is uh, the Wilson leak, which they talk about in that podcast, which is a, a confirmed, per Jeremy Corbell, uh, a conversation between a scientist and an admiral, which I believe is the highest rank in the Navy. I don't know for sure. I don't know military ranks that well. But I believe an admiral is the highest, if not one of the highest ranks. In it's, it's up there, for sure. It's definitely one of the higher ranks in the Navy. And he's denied access to these documents. I also believe at some point the government did admit that the project that Bob Lazar was working on, the name he gave, is an actual thing. But that that wasn't what they were doing, which obviously they're not going to tell us. Oh, yeah, we were trying to find, you know technology from aliens they're not going to say that and another thing right before i forget about bob lazar it's someone i know in my personal life and i think i told you this, i think i texted you this yeah um a person i work with told me that his sister worked at area 51 and personally knew bob lazar and that everything he said was is 100 percent true and we have been and still are in contact with aliens every day for a very long time do you i mean obviously you never really know but like what, what gives you the faith that he's, like, not bullshitting on it? I mean, I don't know for sure. I don't talk to him every day and all like that, but I've known him for years because Pop used to work with him. Mm -hmm. He worked in the same store as Pop did. I never knew the man to lie about things. Right. I don't think he has a reason to, you know. And he told me that she still, to this day, can't tell him pretty much anything about what she did, but she did say that she knew Bob and what he said was true. Interesting. So, 
couple other things I want to talk about is the Battle of L.A. I don't know how familiar you are with this. Uh, I pretty much, pretty much what I know about it. Um, again, not saying that it's all true. I'm just letting you know what I've heard. Right, yeah, yeah, absolutely, really. absolutely. Um, well, I know you know that, but you got to gotta just put it out there for everybody but uh pretty much like uh there was an alert because there's a unidentified flying object um which again you know i think like yes that is an extraterrestrial thing that's like if you believe in that stuff and everything like yeah a ufo would be like an alien spaceship but it also could just be you know again any type of foreign military right. unidentified An unidentified object. Object. so that was coming in, um, huge panic because, you know, um, when, what was the time? I don't remember the year. So, I'll give you a quick rundown, and then you can just kind of tell me, yeah, this, I knew about that or I didn't know this part. Well, just, just refresh my year, because I... It was in I'll 1942, it was February 25th of 1942. So it was, okay, so it was, you know, it's panic of... Around World War II. Yeah, World War II. World War II was 1941, right? Yeah, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, what I know is <laughs> But yeah, so I know, I know, I couldn't remember if it was that or if it was the Cold War. I couldn't yeah. remember the difference. Yep, yep. Um, but so it was panic over the war, possible attack. Um, I'm pretty sure they even radioed it over to civilians. Right, so they um, had an air raid siren and they also had a blackout, which means right. all the lights and all the power to the entire area and is cut they, off. I'm pretty sure they warned people, like, be prepared for an attack. By yeah, and that's what the raid sirens are for. Right some some type of unknown thing um so like it's it was confirmed that something now obviously whatever that object was is what's going to be most criticized but i think didn't they say it was a hot air balloon or something so so basically what happened it was about three in the morning and all of a sudden they hear raid sign i don't know how to make the noise but the raid fucking that's signs <laughs> that's in all the movies okay that goes off the city blacks out. Now, during this time, again, it's during World War II. Um, and also, they did pick this thing up. On, and, it, and it's, you know, the Battle of L.A. Actually, I did watch a video today on it. And I'm not as convinced as I was, 100% that it was aliens. But at the same time, the explanation they give is always funny. That's, that's, the, that's a key thing to remember, too, is that. How, like you said, even if this isn't an alien thing, right. the the way the government that, handles it is always suspicious. Is to and that government. makes you think, well, fuck, maybe it was. Right, right. So basically, anyways, these radars, three different radars, pick it up. All of a sudden, it disappears. Um, vanish from radar visuals. They spot it, and they open fire. They shot over fourteen hundred artillery shells at this thing. Now, there has been reports that some people saw multiple planes there are some people that saw said they saw blimps some people said they saw balloons um you know there's a couple different things that people said but um you know they they also said that they saw different 50, 15 different planes but they were going very slow at one point they said that it was commercial planes but it was flowing illegally like it wasn't a scheduled flight because every flight you have to say, hey, listen, I'm going to fly from here to there, I think. I, I don't know that for sure, but I believe that... I'm sure you have to have them. It's got to be documented somewhere. Right. So, yeah, people see... Um, some people said they saw planes fall. Some people said that they just saw, like, you know, scrap metal falling. But, you know, in, in 1945, the classified docks blame a red flare attached to a weather balloon, which is what the government's official stance on is that it was a weather balloon. No I mean, and, and, and here's the thing. A weather balloon, I don't care how strong that. you make it, isn't going to be take 100 artillery shells. Maybe what even one. Yeah. Let alone 1,400. You think, what was that blimp? Was it the Goodyear? I don't know. There was, wasn't there a blimp that like crashed or blew up or something? That caught on fire. I, um... Heinsberg, maybe? Heinsberg? I, I, yeah, I can't think of it, but I know exactly what you're talking about. It's not the Goodyear blimp. It's not That's the Goodyear blimp, blimp, but I know exactly what you're talking about. They, they um, The material caught it on fire right. and it literally just disintegrated, basically. Right. And that, I mean, I know that was a long time ago, but, I mean, so was this. So, like, the fact that, you know, they would even dumb it down that much, like, right. there's no way. Right. Now, 
the thing is too is that the LA Times published the photo, which like I said, I'll try to edit that in. If not, look up Battle of LA photo or something like that. Battle of LA photo, look that up, um, and you can see it if I didn't edit it in. But you can clearly see what looks like to me a flying craft. This right? is for the Battle of LA. The Battle of LA. You can clearly see it. So basically, when a blackout occurs in these military terms, all the lights and the entire, all the power gets caught all over the place, and they shine spotlights. And there's a picture of what looks like a flying saucer with all these artillery or all these lights shining at it and it looks like explosions all around it now before i had watched this video that i watched today on it my understanding of the battle of it was basically that but that this thing floated in from the ocean sat there for hours it hovered right just hovered there for hours where they just unloaded shell after shell after shell and then it's kind of just floated over the sea and disappeared that's what I've heard it as, and it's very interesting today that I saw it and that I, you know, I don't want to say that I, I am an expert and that I have 100% proof that UFOs exist. I 100% believe they personally exist. There's too much evidence to support it and not enough evidence to argue the opposite. And, you know, I don't want to offend anyone, but I find it funny that I had a couple people when I brought this topic up that are very religious, that believe in such subjects as the Virgin Mary, okay, <laughs> but can't fathom the idea that there's beings from another galaxy or another solar system. But that's all I'm going to say about yeah. that. I just had to say that. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off on that a little bit. Like, you got to think here, like, you know, there's, there's things that can be explained that we know how to calculate, right? Like, probability. And think about how big our galaxy is, just our solar system, our galaxy. Right. The probability that in our galaxy alone, alone, that, that we there's, so there's some other planet that can sustain life. Now, whether life is a, a bacteria, like a little virus, right. or you know, full fledged like a typical alien, or you know, alien, whatever yeah. it is, living things are living things, right? So the probability itself is definitely not zero. I I would have no way of telling you what the number could be, no. but I know damn well it's not. It zero. can't. Be. It's not possible mathematically. And right, and that's just our galaxy. Imagine exactly. all of outer space. We can't even. There's planets that we know are there that we can't get to. And we we've, we've already been discovering this. Whatever telescope it is now has been discovering like. Like we're getting up more up close pictures now, like we're discovering Saturn other and all this crazy shit. But then you also this is something I was thinking about earlier. You gotta think too, like Earth's orbit is what determines like our time for us, right? Like right. a year is three hundred and sixty five days, that's one orbit around the sun. Right. Not every planet orbits the same no. speed or in the same No, distance. absolutely not. So so time is kind of irrelevant. Irrelevant, really. It's you know yeah. so you gotta think specifically about like planet Nibiru. Right, I mean, we can get into that later. I'll explain more. Yeah, about but that. I say I'm not familiar with that one. I'll, I'll tell you more about that when we get to it. But that's a planet that, for a while, was, you know, considered. Uh, I don't. I don't remember if it was considered like, like made up. But like we discovered the planet not that long ago, and actually, I believe the amount of time every three thousand five hundred years, it comes into and crosses Earth's orbit. I think that was the planet they suspected in like. I don't know if it was 2012, but they were, like, worried that it was going to crash into the moon and crash into us and cause whatever. But right. So that's been confirmed to be a planet, and it's confirmed that it comes into our orbit every 3,500 years. So if you think about that, I mean, who knows how fast it spins? Like, right. time could be, they could be a 100, 1,000 years ahead of us. Absolutely. And have the technology so far advanced that they are able to come here and right. study to see how we're developing. Now, I'm a little dumb i believe it actually would be that they're older than us right yeah that's what i'm saying because they're they're, they're so much more advanced they're much more advanced but so they'd be in their the time future. they're millions of years older than us right so they're i get what you're saying right, right. right. i think you guys understand what we're saying I, I don't know if i misspoke or something but i don't know i, I, I am i'm saying the same thing. we're saying, saying the same they're, thing they're right. more advanced they're right. older like they're, it's like it's kind of like star wars and i never understood this until i was older how at the beginning it says a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, and they have all this much more fancier shit, like right. hovercrafts and flying vehicles. 
and I never understood that. I'm like, if it's you know a long time ago. Then how do they how did we not make this stuff? But that's what they're saying. They're in a completely galaxy, completely different galaxy where time is completely different. And a good example of time and space is actually it's a long movie and it's kind of confusing. And I I still have watched it multiple times and I still get confused. Is Interstellar. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I've seen a little bit of it. Interstellar, I believe, is... Um, I can't think of the actor's name. I can picture him. I can hear him. Put it in the video. I think I'm going to edit it. If I remember. <laughs> I'm probably going to forget because this is already almost an hour long. And this is going to take days to render. Yeah, for sure. Like this is, I need a new laptop. And this is going to take probably two days to render. Anyways. Um... It doesn't matter. Whatever his name is, it's a very good movie, and it, it goes over the whole space and the time and space, and it's confusing to me still. Oh, there's that. There's dimensions. Like, right. There's just so much. Shit. Right. I think black holes are like a major factor in that. Like That can cause like a whole parallel. Movement. Absolutely. Like, who knows? And that's a whole other subject is the whole, you know, everything in life being a simulation and there being other versions of your life on different different you know kind of like the rick and morty effect where there's the multi -universe. multiple universes with multiple timelines and multiple things that coincide and, we, and again that's a whole whole nother topic that at some point we can do i'd have to do more research on all that but another thing i want to talk about is roswell new mexico and this is one of the first accounts probably one of the most popular accounts of alien activity and government cover cover-ups and um, i think this is where the first, like, story of bodies being recovered right. and comes into play. I believe you're right. From, I don't know if it's the first, but I know definitely I, this is the first I know of, at least, yeah, that I've I heard mean, of. Yeah, so somebody, um, somebody will look that up, but... So Roswell, New Mexico, basically, it was on June 14, 1947, in the Foster Ranch, and, um, Meg Brazil, basically this guy found a crash in his ranch, and he, and he called the cops, and the cops came out, and ordered the military base to come out. And I have a lot of notes that I'm not going to read because it'll be too long and too much to explain. And you guys can do your own research on this. And um, I'll try to link if I remember the videos that I watched on this stuff to kind of get my brain refreshed. But long story short, this craft crashed. And at first they originally said, yeah, you know, this is a UFO. And they actually ran it in the paper and the government said it was a UFO. Only to the day later say, oh no, it was a weather balloon. I think he retracted straight and say, oh no, sorry, it was a weather balloon. So this general basically, here, yeah, balloon. that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying earlier when I was talking about no they weather, the FBI. They right? Yeah, the, weather, the, right? <laughs> the FBI is saying that they raided Bob Lazar for a, a receipt, and then the whole multiple times where they blame things on weather balloons, you know, which is also what, like I said, I think I did say that they blame the Battle of a L.A. on. Um, right, but, um, they took the debris to Fort Worth, Texas under the order of General Ramsey, um, and they basically said it was a weather balloon, and they took pictures of it. Now, the interesting, if I, if I, again, I'm deciding still when I edit this, if I want to put the picture on there, or have you guys Google it yourself, or link it in the description, just because copyright, I don't think pictures are going to get me mail for it, but just in case, I might just link them in the description you guys can just click on it and say okay this is what he's talking about um basically they originally said oh it was a bunch of sticks and you know a bunch of shit and it was a weather balloon they took a picture now earlier on i have it someplace in here that they basically admitted that that was a hoax the picture was bullshit that that was indeed not what they actually recovered now they also originally reported that they found three bodies. And it's unclear if it was or four bodies and three were dead and one was alive, maybe. I, mean, I think it was three, two were, two were dead and one was alive. Something, Something like that. Along I think it was three, though. I'm, I'm almost positive it was I three. think you're right. I think there was two dead and one alive. But there was a video that's apparently um, been already debunked more than once. It's fake by the actual creator. But there's a video online called Alien Autops Autopsy. Right. I've seen that one. Uh, it's fake, so don't fall for that one. But yeah, I was gonna say that one's not very good. But they did take the bodies to a place, and they most likely dissected it. I think. I think they. The explanation too is, um, they were like the size of children. Like they were very short. They were three and a half to four foot. Right. So very short. Um, not like. 
Not like your typical, like the alien you'd see on like a cartoon, like that poster you got over there. Like they did have bigger eyes, but like still, still a humanoid type. They were bipedal. Figure. Um, like a grayish washed out they were gray. skin color. Those I think they were had gray. only three. I don't think they had five fingers. They either had. I don't know about the fingers, but I might be wrong on that. But I might be getting something mixed up. Um, yeah. But I think they explained something about the fingers or toes or something like that being different, which is what they were able to distinguish. Like this wasn't quite human. Well, allegedly, allegedly. I, I I think you did get that confused. What I believe happened, if I correct, if I'm remembering right, is that they they discovered the bodies, but you know civilians didn't really see them because there's a lot of there's over 300 people or 600 something people that saw all this stuff or whatever when it was being driven by. Um, and they describe them as having large heads, kind of like your typical alien, large eyes, slits for noses, slits for mouth. Um, often they're described with no sex organs. Um, they're also described as not to talk, um, that they might communicate telepathically, so they can just be, you know, talking with their minds, um, and they don't show emotion, which is part of what some one of the guys, I don't remember his name, that got apparently abducted, which that's a whole other topic we'll get into, I'm not gonna get into that video, um, but basically, the government's explanation for the figures that people saw were dummies that they were dropping from parachutes to test the effects of gravity on the body or something along those lines but the issue people have with that and that i have with that is that the dummies were six foot tall on average and the bodies reported to be three three and a half to four feet right that doesn't make sense also you can tell the difference between a dummy and something living well that they're not gonna make a fucking ultra-realistic dummy it was probably made out of knapsacks and hay and stuff how are the dummies falling out of a weather balloon Right. Right. Like that just, that right. alone just doesn't right. really right. make sense. Or and the original investigator actually came forward and said, you know, no, this, they really did find, um, you know, oh, they did find pictures. And it was, that's, I have the note, it was Lieutenant Walter, who was, I believe, the original investigator. And I wrote down in here, he claimed that the weather balloon picture is a hoax to throw um, people off and quiet them about the actual. Um, founding or findings. Major General Lawrence C. Craig founded Project Sign, which is the first official investigation about UFOs. Um, and one of the things that was interesting about this is that they said that the material that it was made of um, was the craft. The, the craft. The craft. Oh, okay. Um, and, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about Roswell. Um, because I did watch a video and there was a skeptic, and he did make a couple of good points, but I also, I still believe Roswell was definitely a cover-up. Um, there's other things I've watched where people have said that, you know, the government officials came to their houses and, you know, came to their door and basically said, listen, you didn't see what you saw, you're to keep your mouth shut or else bad things will happen to you. And some of the places got, you know, raided and ransacked through because they were looking for stolen debris from the crash site and shit like that they kind of like harass them too yeah they like would they just call them randomly shake them down and then just scare them into people. not telling the truth which if you go on the track route of the government unfortunately that's a common theme where yeah. when there's problems they get silenced or they get paid off or whatever i mean i don't want to get too into this this can be a completely other thing other story but that's the thing. This is like the epicenter of like so many other. <laughs> yeah, you're telling me, man. I could think of ten different podcasts Same. just from the government conspiracies and the government alone. Our grandfather, Pop, told us a story, or at least told me a story. I don't know that you. I don't think you were there. I think it was just me and him. Years ago, like I'm talking like ten years ago at least, about a person he knew that invented a car that ran on water. And that he tried to patent it and all that. And this is before, like, cell phones and computers were really a thing. And the guy just kind of disappeared. And it's kind of a known thing that the government literally just killed the guy. And it just happened again, which again gets in another complete conspiracy theory. But the guy that um, shot up the, the place in Buffalo, New York, one of the guys that was there and got shot happened to be the guy that invented the second car that ran on water. That was the security guard? 
there's a security guard that works there, the there's store. a there is a news clip um that shows him talking about the engine he was working on um so that's not some bullshit thing and obviously no. condolences go out to that whole situation but Right. Just, just to be clear on that, like yeah, we're not. That, that's a confirmed thing that the guy was working on. He was working on it. Yeah, and it was on the. It's news not con news. was not confirmed, and obviously they don't, they're not gonna confirm it. Is that the guy that shot that place up? It could have honestly, it could have been a coincidence. The guy could have been a sick fuck and decided to shoot this place up, and the guy happened to be there. But at the same time, what are the chances that that's the particular place that that guy chose? To shoot up but again that is a completely different video we're not going to touch on that in this one um but yeah i mean there's so much to talk about and i don't want to make this too long it's about an hour i think that's kind of a good point to kind of win it down right is there anything else you want to kind of add any more things and you know this could so, be something that if you guys like this and please if you guys stuck with us and watch this full thing let us know if you guys do like this, you know, share with your friends. Give us some feedback if there's topics you guys want us to talk about or if you want to, you know, put your opinions that negates ours, that it's against ours, or even if it's with ours. I read all my comments. I get, you know, three or four, so I read every one of them. And um, I totally be willing, and I'm sure I can speak with Vin. He'll be willing to do another one. And you guys can bring up your points about anything we talked about, and I'll do my research, and I'll bring up your points and kind of talk about them and we can them. almost have a debate with them i think uh we won't get into it on this one but next time definitely um like this one we definitely just listed things that we've seen heard that right. we believe um right, right. next time i think we can definitely get into like our own like personal theories about those things so the specifically the aliens and like the key gods. points that are mentioned the aliens and the gods um, that's one thing I did want to mention. I did write in my notes, but again, to keep this not extremely long. Um, and I want to say with these podcasts, I'm going to try to keep them to around an hour. But if it's a really juicy subject and we get into it, it can go for as long as it wants. It could be, we can end up having two and a half hour, three hour ones. Um, but I believe he came up with a theory. I don't know if it's something that's been talked about by other people that ancient people because there is evidence of ancient people you know the pyramids and oh, and, and, get into it. and <laughs> things and then things um i mean shit we can pause and shoot a second one and get into it and just make it a second episode but um we can make aliens part one and two uh i think we'll wait anyways you know it's then came a kind of a theory and it makes a lot of sense that people were contacted with by aliens in early times, like the pyramids, you know, and even, even during like the Greek times and all that kind of shit before it, whatever. And humans mistake these beings from other planets as gods. And it's where, it's where the, the start of religion comes from, in my opinion. You know, and, right? You know, not not uh, shitting on anyone's religion. So no. before we get attacked for that. But, no, um, no. I mean, Listen, it just it just makes sense. You know, I'll, it's, it's I'll like tell you guys right thing. now. I'm not religious anyway. I don't think any religions are real, whether that's Christianity, Buddhism, Muslim. I think it's all a bunch of made-up crap. If that offends you, I'm sorry. If that's what you believe in, that's great, and that's what makes this country awesome, is that you can believe in whatever the fuck you want, and no one can tell you anything about it, because you can tell them to go fuck themselves and still believe in what you want. I, just, I think that the different religions came from the same idea. They usually associate their God with being in the, in the sky. sky and all that. So... Long story short, because this is a different one, I just, I think it essentially comes from, it's like, it's like the game of telephone, like, this, like, just was passed on throughout, and yeah. then people from different areas talk about it, it's interpreted differently. Differently, uh, things became different. But to wrap it up, I guess there's just one question, mm -hmm. like, I guess you just gotta come, like, do you believe in aliens? Yeah. What do you guys think? I mean, it's pretty clear we do. <laughs> Um, but I'd be very interested and I, again, please, please, if you guys did watch this whole thing, um, and hopefully you guys did and hopefully you enjoyed it, comment and I really will. We will do a, a second follow up even and then we'll go over what you guys said and I, I had a couple people want to be on it. I wanted to keep it to the original cast first. Maybe once we get this going, do a couple episodes, I'll start having guest hosts and I would definitely like to have someone on here that disagrees with one of our opinions and that would be willing to debate with us yeah. um 
and have a you know obviously a civil conversation not start screaming and yelling yeah. i'm open to like like i have my theories i have my ideas about things based on what i've seen things i think about but like i'm open i'm i may not believe it but like i'm open like, to for it. example like one that i've recently seen a lot like the whole idea that space is fake Oh, fuck I, I don't believe it. What? <laughs> listen. <man. laughs> people think space is fake. There's a lot of people, but listen. What the fuck do they think it is? A fucking I, projector? I, well, they think a lot of it's CGI. Oh, but Jesus hear Christ. me out. Hear me out. Again, I don't believe this theory, but I will give the people credit. They do have, like, they at least bring things that support. Like, they're not just like, no, it's fake. And then you're like, well, why do you oh, say yeah. that? Like, they bring claims that are supported by things they've seen heard like so i'm i'm willing to yeah I, you know I, I even if i don't agree at all yeah i'll still think it's cool to dive into it yeah. and just as long it's, as you I'm can present to me facts like, your reason evidence well not facts because facts mean it's true right. but like well, yeah. like if you can like support your damn claims so we can have a conversation so if i ask you like okay show me why you think that or whatever yeah, so like, bring your receipts and right. you know i'm not saying i'm gonna be like oh you're right but like shit i'm open if you're uh, I am too. So if we have any space doubters, which again, I'm shocked it is a thing. I it's, think you guys yeah. are fucking nuts, but I would love for you guys to come on and talk to us about it. So, all right, guys, that's going to be it. Um, again, thank you to Vin for coming and chilling and having this talk with us. And then hopefully you guys like it and please give us some feedback. All right, guys. Joy Con 94 out.